Hey guys, so the other day I was hanging out in the drugstore and I came across the new coverall collection from Wet n Wild and I picked up the foundation as well as the powder and I believe this was $4 and this was 3 so for both of these I only paid about $7 and some change which I was really excited about. Um, they came in a pretty good range of shades, I think they're about 4 or 5. There was a shade lighter than this but it was very, very light, and I didn't think it would match my undertones because this is a bit warmer, <clears throat> and I am I have a warm undertone to my skin. So this is in the shade uh, Fair and Light, and as you can see at the top, this is in the shade Light and Pale. So I haven't had a chance to try these out or even swatch them because as you can see, they're still sealed. So because it's such a yucky day outside right now, and it's raining, and... I just had my pajamas on and some tea, and I just thought this would be a good time to do a first impression video because if it doesn't match my skin right and I and I don't like it, I can just take it off and I've only wasted about $7, which I'm not going to cry about, um, but I do hope I like it, so I guess we'll find out. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to take the little seal off of here. Alright, and we're just going to see what... Ooh, that came out really fast. I barely even touched it. That came out really fast. Okay. So this is what the color looks like, and I'll kind of rub it in. And then I'll do the shade test. So yeah, that just kind of blended into my skin pretty well. So I have high hopes. Um, I haven't put on a primer just because the only one I have is one I got for Christmas and it's a high-end primer and I know not everyone has high-end primers or even uses primers to begin with so I didn't want you guys to think that that would change how this product works on my skin so I'm just not going to use one. I did put on a little bit of moisturizer but that's only because I have dry skin and I really do need some moisturizer before I put on um, any makeup product on my face. So, obviously this isn't enough. I'm going to pour out just a teeny bit more. Or a lot more. This stuff comes out really fast. But I, I do like the shade. I think it's going to work out pretty well. I like the texture too. It's not, it's not moussey, but it's really, um, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's really soft, like smooth. I think I'm just going to apply it with my fingers because it kind of reminds me of like the Revlon Colorstay Whip Foundation, the texture of it, the way it feels when you apply it. And I know that most people apply that foundation with their fingers. So I'm just going to apply it to this side of the face. And it does kind of have a smell to it. It's not extremely strong like the Revlon Colorstay Foundation. I don't know, it has a weird smell. It kind of smells like, I don't know, I want to think of like fruit. But like old candy fruit. If that, <laughs> I don't even think that makes sense, but that's what it reminds me of. So. It seems to be blending into my skin really well. I don't see any streaks, and I'm also looking. I really like this texture like my first thought would be that this feels really good it's easy to blend into my skin and it feels very soft it's not heavy or thick either and I can feel it starting to set it's not still sliding around on my face which is nice because I did just review the Revlon Nearly Naked foundation and that didn't set until like 20-30 minutes later almost so this is setting right away. But it does give you enough time to blend it out too, so. Okay. So if I lean in, you can see that it's covered some of the redness on this side of the face, but it hasn't completely covered some of my blemishes, which is okay with me just because I'm used to using a concealer and I, I, I don't ever mind my foundation not completely covering my blemishes. 
I haven't applied a second layer, so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and see. This stuff is really easy to blend in with your fingers. And I'm even kind of patting it in, in the areas where I'd want that coverage. Hopefully that would help. Okay, so now that I've applied extra coverage to these two areas, I am really impressed. It has covered the redness. Down here where my blemishes are, they are a bit raised above the surface of my skin, and I know the foundation can't do anything for that, so I don't expect it to. I'm going to go ahead and apply a second layer on this side to see how buildable the coverage is, and then I'm going to go ahead and finish up this side as well, and that way you can see how it works. And I believe for, for applying it to this side, I'm going to use a buffing brush. And I'm going to just grab my Sigma, this is the F82, okay, so, And I'm also just going to put a few spots here, and that way we can see whether or not I have time to do my whole face at once. So I'll just put that there and let that sit while I finish up this side. Okay, so I feel like I had an easier time applying it with my fingers, but the brush did work. I mean, there, there aren't any complaints there, but I probably just stick to using my fingers because it worked pretty well with that the first time. So now that this has had a while to set, I'm going to see how well I can apply this second application onto this side of my face. And... I would say this has been sitting here for a little less than a minute. And I'm still able to blend it into my skin on top of the first application without any problems. So far, I really am impressed with this foundation, especially for it to be a drugstore foundation on the lower end of drugstore, I should say. So my overall thoughts on this foundation so far is that I am really impressed with it, especially because it only cost me $4 for one fluid ounce, and it's got buildable coverage that doesn't look cakey after two applications. It's a very natural looking finish. I do really like the texture, and it reminds me a lot of the Revlon Colorstay Whip Foundation, which I also enjoy. It's very easy to blend into my skin. I can use my fingers or just a, any kind of brush that I, I'd like, or a beauty blender. And another thing that I like about it is it sets in a timely manner, but I can apply it in one application and don't have to worry about picking one side of my face to do at a time. So now that I've tried this foundation out and really do like it, I'm going to move on to the Coverall Powder in the shade Light and Pale, and I just need to open this up for a second. <laughs> which could take until, okay. Oh, 
Oh, they got another one down here? Killing me. Why? Dude. This stuff is $3. Why do you have to worry about people stealing it to the point where you've got to put stickers on both sides? Come on. Ah. So far, I'm not liking this. <laughs> I'm going to base my whole first impression off how freaking hard it is to just even touch the product to begin with. Yes, I peeled off one little piece. That is not helpful <laughs> at all. By the time I get this off, you're going to have already gone out and bought this for yourself. Because this is never... There it goes. Okay. Okay, so this is the... <sighs> so this is the coverall powder. So when I open this up, this is what the powder looks like. And it comes with one of the, the sponge applicators, which do come in handy, especially if you like to press the powder into your uh, skin to set the foundation. And if I just swipe it with my finger, that's a pretty opaque swatch. I think that's definitely going to give some coverage. And it's also very smooth. It kind of reminds me of the Revlon nearly naked powder I have almost. So I'm just going to take my e.l.f. powder brush and just tap it into the powder and then press it into my skin. I'm not, I'm not putting a whole lot on just because I have dry skin so I can't. When I'm tapping it in there, I don't know if you can see that, but the powder is really soft, so it's actually just crumbling a teeny bit. You can see over here. I do think that says something about how soft this powder is, that even tapping lightly into it, it's still going to kind of crumble a teeny bit. So that's just about all I can put on without it looking cakey because it would be my fault. So just looking at the application, I find that this powder is very smooth and creamy and provides a good bit of coverage without looking cakey. It's still a natural finish. And for the price, I'm really impressed with this powder. I think it's... It reminds me a bit of my Revlon Nearly Naked powder in the sense that it, it kind of feels really creamy when you swipe your finger across it. It doesn't look cakey when you apply it and it's opaque so it does provide a good bit of coverage. The only difference is that this is about three or four dollars. So. so just based on my first impression, I am really amazed at the quality of these products. The only thing I don't know for sure is how long wearing they are. However, even if it turns out they only last about two hours, I'm still really glad that I got them because they would be the perfect thing to have in your makeup collection in case you're going out to the grocery store or just to run an errand and you don't want to use up any of the foundations that you truly love. This would be a great backup foundation to have just because it's it's got great coverage, it's buildable, it's it's blendable, it's soft and creamy and all kinds of things that are wonderful and I, I do really like it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful to you. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or comments for any future videos as I would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!